the God of peace. Of course, in the Old Testament, Isaiah 9, 6, talks about Jesus being the Prince of Peace. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I want to just shake up our understanding of this phrase, Prince of Peace, as I've studied this. Because the word prince in Hebrew doesn't mean somebody, somebody that wears a crown that walks around with an amazing robe looking princely. That is not what this means. The word for prince is the word sar, S-A-R. And listen to what it means. One who contends, who fights, who wrestles, who governs, and who rules. Fights, contends, wrestles, governs, rules. He's our prince. And then, of course, the word peace is the word shalom. We're all familiar with the word shalom. It means peace, blessing, tranquility, favor, prosperity, abundance. It means to have favor with God, to have favor with man, which I believe is actually part of the symbol for this year. Um, it means somebody preached a message. I have no idea who it was, but they said it kind of means nothing missing, nothing damaged, nothing broken. How many have heard that? But very interesting. If you, I was reading a Hebrew scholar on the word shalom, and they talked about the picture word that is associated with each letter when you Hebraically spell the word shalom. And they said if you read the picture word and put that together, this is what shalom actually means. It means peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos by infusing the presence of the Lord. I think right there is our assignment. We've got to destroy the, the authority of chaos in every single one of our cities and infuse the presence of the Lord. Between now and the election, that's our job. And moving forward, we have to understand is that God has anointed us to root up, to tear down, to throw down, and to destroy. How many know that looks a little bit like chaos? But the whole purpose of that is to build and plant. And I want to I relate this to a dream that I had just to kind of show you on God's timetable where we are. Um, the year that I wasn't able to come to you because I was in Korea and had got, come back sick, I'd actually had a very vivid dream while I was there. And in the dream, um, I saw a, the seven-headed dragon of the book of Revelation, okay? Um, and the church, the, 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 the church in Korea was battling. They're a praying church. They're a warring church. They're a fighting church. They were battling. And I watched as the people mobilized and began to battle and fight in this dream. They, they took a sword and they cut the head, one of the heads off of the dragon. And... They moved on to fighting the next head of the dragon. And while they were fighting the next head, the first head grew back. How many know this is, seems like a pretty hopeless battle? Of course, over in Korea, China, all of this, this is dragon culture over there. Okay, everything is about the dragon. And um, so in this dream, I saw something happen in the earth that caused the entire global church to focus on taking out the dragon. And as the entire global church focused, I saw a golden sword come out of heaven and just, just take all the heads off the dragon. And then I saw the hand of the Lord take a lance and he drove it straight through the heart of the dragon. And when that Lance went into the heart of the dragon. What spilled out was a billion soul harvest. So I was sharing this on a prayer call since COVID. We live our lives on Zoom these days. Um, and I was sharing this on a prayer call and Becca Greenwood said, she said, you know, it's very interesting. She said, because... She's been working with the church in China for a, a lot of years. And, and years ago, they did a complete mapping of China, spiritual mapping of China. And years ago, and they wrote this, they determined that the heart of the dragon was located 
in a little known city to the Western world called Wuhan. This is why we need these meetings, because I didn't have that peace. I didn't have that understanding. Can you see God's plan is to take the head off of these things and to cause that billion soul harvest to come? I'm telling you, this is the church's greatest hour. It's America's greatest hour. Amen? What's interesting is that if you read in Isaiah chapter 51, it talks about Rahab and it says, wake up, wake up, arm of the Lord, show your strength. Didn't you make mincemeat out of Rahab and called him, called Rahab the chaos dragon? The chaos dragon. Well, I'm telling you something. God is rising and executing his arm of strength. In this year of strength, the strength of the arm of the Lord is coming into his church. And we're executing God's vengeance against this. And we're bringing victory. Amen. This is a time of victory. And, and so let me just wrap this up by saying this. Is that all that God is de declaring. God said to me in March that this is going to be one of the greatest comebacks that our nation has ever seen. One of the greatest comebacks the world has ever seen. One of the greatest comebacks the church has ever seen. Several years ago, the Lord talked to me about comeback, and he said, he said it to me this way. He said, tell the church their setback is only a setup for a mighty comeback. Your setback's only a setup for a mighty comeback. As we engage with him, God is setting us up for comeback. He is setting us up for, for some of the best days of seeing the things we've been praying actually come to pass. It's a time of suddenlies. It's a time of suddenlies for people personally, for the church, for the nation, and I believe for the nations of the earth. Let me tell you something. In our church, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. We've had, in the last two months, we're a church of maybe 300. In the last two months, we've had 18 families buy new homes in the middle of a shutdown. We've had businesses break records. We've had, we planted new churches. We've had churches buy new buildings. We had all this stuff. We're advancing. We're not retreating. We're not stalemating. I want to tell you guys, I want you to stand to your feet. I believe that God has positioned us for one of the greatest comebacks that we're, we've ever seen before. And I believe that there's a culmination of the prayers that are coming as we deal with the, the, the corruption, as we deal with the witchcraft, as we deal with the chaos. I believe that God is going to show his arm strong and mighty for us now in this season as never before. Amen. Could you just lift up your hands and let me, let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. God, that you would put that white stone in our hand, that you would show us the things that we need to see. God, that we would, that we would understand the, the things that we're fighting and the things that aren't our battle. But God, our focus right now is on seeing America saved. God, we decree that America shall be saved. We decree right now, Father God, America will see her greatness. We will be the, the shining light on the, on the hill, Father God, that is declaring the gospel to the nations of the earth. God, we will be a sending nation that sends the gospel to the ends of the earth, Father God. We decree the mightiest move of awakening, the mightiest move of reformation, the mightiest move of a governmental shift that brings righteousness and justice back to our land. We decree, Father God, that our best days are not behind us. Our best days are ahead of us, Father God. And we decree that we're stepping out of crisis into a season of comeback in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you, everybody here to give the Lord a big shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.